There's an argument that Canadians should be breaking their mortgage. Now, it's not for everybody, and really it's only for the people that currently have a mortgage that starts with a six. Because right now, rates are almost a full point lower, if not more, and it may actually make sense to pay that penalty to save money over a period of time. There's been a lot of conversation about what is going on with Canadian mortgages. With all the renewals coming up, what should people do? Should they take the variable rate and ride it all the way down? Should they just take the fixed rate, even though it's going to be a little bit lower in the future so that they can sleep at night? Well, I talked to Jesse Merson. Jesse is my personal mortgage broker. He's helped hundreds of our clients over the years, and we had a really interesting conversation going over all these different topics. Should you be breaking your mortgage? Can you take a mortgage that's half fixed, half variable, right? All the different things that are coming up in conversation, it got really interesting. I'm going to share that interview with you now. If you learned anything new in this video, all I ask is hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and you can also book a call with myself or my team in the first link in the description. Here's the interview. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so Jesse, a lot of people believe that variable rates will continue to go down. There might be a few more cuts in 2024, and at the end of 2025, there's a chance that that overnight rate could be at three or potentially lower. So my first question is, if you've been riding the variable this entire time and you've been really feeling it the last few years, is it too late to lock in to fix now? Should you just ride the variable rate down from here? Well, I think that if you've been patient enough to hold on to a variable, you started to reap the rewards of that just in the last few months. We've seen three rate cuts from the Bank of Canada so far, and I think a lot of confidence has come back to the variable term. We were pretty late in terms of when the uh, rates started to come down. A lot had a lot of forecasts had called for earlier in the year, and they started in June. Now we've had three cuts. Expectation is two more by the end of the year, and then potentially another four, you know, by the end of 2025. So, if you have some confidence in that outlook, I think that if you do stay variable, you will be rewarded. You know, everybody's got different preferences um, in terms of what they prioritize, and so you know. Converting to a fixed rate today may save you some money in the short term. It will definitely, you know, lower your uh, payments overall, which I think a lot of people are, um, you know, looking for these days. So, you know, everybody's situation is a little bit unique, but I think if you are in the process of renegotiating your mortgage today or have an existing fixed rate mortgage and you're paying, say, six or, you know, potentially even more than that, 6%, mm -hmm. it's definitely worth considering, you know, switching to a variable rate today. Now, there's a lot of the talk throughout the last few years of uh, the trigger rate and that scary letter that people would get from the bank uh, when you were no longer covering all the interest of your mortgage, right? And you had to kick in more. Right, right. Now, yep. so walk me through, because as the variable continues to go down, some people might think, great, this means automatically my payment goes down. But there's other people that had a different type of variable product that their payment hasn't actually gone down yet. Maybe just more of it is pushing over to the principal side. Can you explain that to That's me? That's right. Yeah, for sure. So there are a number of lenders that have what we call a static mortgage payment. So regardless of what the rate does, whether it goes up or goes down, your payment stays the same. Now, what happened was as rates started to increase drastically over the you know prior couple of years, Anybody with a static mortgage payment, where again, it stays flat regardless of what the rate does, rates got so high that a lot of people hit what you mentioned, the trigger rate where the payment you're making is not enough to cover the interest that's due based on the amount of mortgage balance that you've got and the current rate at that time. And so anybody that hit their trigger rate got that call from the lender to say, look, we've got to adjust your payment to at least cover the amount of interest that you have to pay this monthly period, for example. Um, now, some lenders have a floating payment based on what the rate does. And so this is something that, you know, really prior to the last couple of years, nobody really paid attention to because rates were very stable. In fact, there was a period between 2010 and, you know, 2019 where Prime didn't uh, change for three and a half, almost four years. Rates were very stable. They maybe went up, you know, 0.25 at, you know, here and there, but trigger rate was not in anybody's sort of vocabulary up until, you know, 22 and 23. So that's an, another important thing to take a look at now where we're, you know, expected to be in a decreasing rate environment. 
you know, if you have a static mortgage payment on a variable rate term, uh, what will happen is more and more of your payment, so the ratio of principal and interest, will sort of start to tilt back to principal. So more of your payment is going to principal. You'll start to see these enormous amortizations come down. Yeah. You know, we see some mortgages that have amortizations that are 50, 60. I even saw 70 years at one point. And so that will start to balance out a little bit. Um, but the other, you know, uh, on the flip side to that is if a lender has a payment where it will reduce based on what the new rate is, and this is great for anybody renegotiating their mortgage today um, or buying a new home and you choose a variable rate term, you can expect to, with these specific lenders, see your uh, monthly payment or biweekly, whatever you decide on, uh, payment adjust based on whatever that new rate is. And so that can change drastically based on forecasts. If we see one, one and a half percent, mm -hmm. um, you know, in rate decreases over the next 12, 18 months, your payment is going to adjust quite, quite a bit. So again, different preferences for different people. But um, that's one of the things that uh, when you choose a variable rate mortgage, you want to take a look at is, you know, A, is there a static payment? Um, and then, of course, as well, what are your options when converting to a fixed rate term, you know, down the road? You know, I think there's a few people listening to this, maybe a lot of people listening to this, that at their core, they know <laughs> that variable rates are going down and probably eventually it will be lower than the fixed rate at some point in time here. But they just can't do it like they won't. They can't sleep at night. They can't lock into that. They, well, I guess not locking into a variable. You know, you know what I mean? Um, they yeah. just can't do yeah. it. So there's a product that you could take that's like half fixed, half variable, and you can choose the percentage yeah. on each side. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's uh, awesome. I'm glad you brought that up because this type of setup and structure and strategy often goes overlooked. Now, the key thing I'll say with this type of setup is you do need at least 20% down. And the reason for that is 20% down allows you to apply for these particular products that are primarily offered by the banks. And so if you were to borrow, let's say $500,000 and you just really can't decide, should I go fix? Should I go variable? You can, uh, to your point, structure it in a way that you have both a fixed rate term as well as a variable rate term. So, you know, I like to tell my clients, look at, you know, it's similar to the way you invest. You're going to diversify, right? Why not diversify your interest rates? And so if you feel more comfortable with a fixed rate term, yes, you could allocate a portion of your mortgage and let's assume a 50-50 split. On that $500,000 scenario, you could take $250,000, put it into a fixed rate term. That's your you know, safe bet, safe harbor, right? But if you did want some exposure to the variable rate term and had confidence that these forecasts are true and rates are going to come down and you wanted some exposure to that, put the other half of your mortgage borrowings into a variable rate term, and now you've got the best of both worlds, right? So it's a, it's a nice strategy and it hedges your bets a little bit and um, just gives you a little bit of confidence at the end of the day that regardless of what happens going forward, you've got things diversified a bit so that you've got protection as well as exposure to rates coming down and some potential you know, interest savings. So 20% down gets you to have the option to choose that product. And you had mentioned 50-50 right. split. Could you do 70-30? Like, does it matter how much you do on either side of it? Yeah, no, absolutely. That's the other nice thing is you can choose any ratio you like. So again, if you're more inclined to go with a fixed rate, you could put 70% of your mortgage borrowings into a fixed rate term and 30% to variable. Um, so these products, I should say as well, um, you know, are uh, again, 20% down is the minimum um, mm -hmm. required to qualify for these. These products are the ones that built in a line of credit. So as you pay down the mortgage balance over time, it creates equity in the home, which is available to you uh, on a uh, secured line of credit. So these are great products. Um, and uh, they are or can be a little tougher to qualify for. The rules around the stress test rate and qualifying is, okay. is a little bit different than a conventional mortgage. So that's important to know. Again, depends on lender, um, you know, and the, and the way that they uh, interpret the rules. So not all lenders are equal when it comes to qualifying you for these types of products. So again, that, that's an important conversation to have. But yeah, it's great. You could choose a 90-10, 70-30, 50-50, whatever you like. Um, and, and again, it just gives you those options and that flexibility, which is nice to have. I can do a 99% fixed and a 1% variable to let right. people know I live dangerously. <laughs> yeah. um, there you go. Exactly. Okay, Perfect. So this is the big question. Um, breaking your mortgage. So... That's what I'm going to title this video. People that have watched this far probably were waiting for, for this part of the conversation. Now, right. for a long time, as rates started going up, I'm sure no one was refinancing unless it was like 
a divorce situation or something happened in their life, like why would you do it, right? Why would you break that great right. rate that you had, right? Or unless you were mm -hmm. jumping over mm -hmm. to fixed early in this process, right? right but now right. there's a strong case to be made that if you took a mortgage at the back half of maybe 2023, when rates yep. were at a 20 yep. year high, <laughs> And they were over 6%. So walk me through this. Like there's people listening to this that took a mortgage last year on their primary residence or an investment property that starts with a six. And today mm -hmm. they could lower their payment significantly and paying the penalty might actually make sense depending on their situation. So can we talk about that? Yeah, for sure. So essentially it really is just a numbers game to do the calculation and say, okay, if you stay put today at say 6%, um, and ride out the remaining term, let's say it's three years, for example, you will pay X amount in interest, right? It's an easy calculation yeah. if you have a fixed rate term. Um, so that, that's an easy calculation and that gives us one number to work with. The next number, the next calculation we wanna take a look at is, okay, if you were to convert to say 5%, um, and we've actually just started to see just in the last week, you know, well, last couple of weeks, you know, under 5% on some of the fixed rate terms. I just this morning saw in the Globe and Mail a headline that said there's some ultra discount lenders under 4%. That's right. probably for an insured or high ratio yeah. type of situation. But again, if we're comparing, say, 6 to 5 and talking about a 1% reduction in borrowing costs, um, the math is over the next three years, compare the amount of interest you would pay at 6% versus five. Obviously with the 5% scenario, you're gonna make an adjustment for whatever the breakage fee or penalty is to get out of the 6% term and, and just run the numbers and say, okay, at the end of the day, how much money more money will be in your pocket at the end of the three years? And what is happening is the way that penalties are being calculated today, I have not come across a situation where it does not make sense to break that 6% mortgage and take a lower rate today. Now, what will happen going forward, um, and this is going to be a fluid thing, is that, believe it or not, as rates come down, as posted rates come down, the penalty will change, the breakage fees will change. It's the way the interest rate differential or IRD formula works. Penalties will uh, actually start to increase. And so, you know, this is where it doesn't hurt. Just, you know, to, to talk to your mortgage professional and say, look, uh, here's what I've got right now. Here are the details. Would it make sense? And that's something that, you know, somebody like myself can turn around and in 10, 15 minutes calculation and say, okay, well, here's how things would look. Here's the benefit to you. Does it make sense? Yes or no? Um, so there's a number of ways to, to play that. The other thing that's, you know, you want to take a look at is depending on your lender, not all interest rate differential calculations are identical. Mm -hmm. So some lenders will use the posted rate when you got your mortgage uh, initially, whereas some lenders will use the contract rate in the calculation. And there's a big difference there. The contract rate is essentially the rate you are paying right now on the mortgage that you have. The posted rate is the rate which everybody gets a discount from and yeah. then equals your uh, contract rate. So that's an important one to look at because if your lender is using a posted rate, your penalty will be higher than a lender that's using a contract rate. Now, I want to go over a few examples here and we'll get this up on the screen. So these are all based on if you were to take a three year fixed term right now. So if you had a five hundred thousand yeah. dollar mortgage with a 30 year AM, your current payment right now at six percent, if you're right at six percent, would be twenty nine seventy four twelve cents a month. OK, if oh, immediately okay. you broke that mortgage and got down to a five percent. And I think a lot of people also don't realize that that penalty Yes, you could just pay that penalty, but that penalty could also just come with you and tack on to the new mortgage so there's no upfront cost. And still, right. your payments would be significantly lower. So the yep. the 5% yep. on that would be 2668. So going from basically almost $3,000 a month to 2650 a month right away if you have right. a $500,000 yep. mortgage. And I think the big thing too is that 6% rate over that three years, it's $87,000, give or take, on interest. And mm -hmm. if you went to the five, it goes down to 72000 These are the numbers yeah, I so think people need to see, right? Oh, totally. Um, and, and you're achieving two things, right? Is one, you're taking advantage of lower interest rates. Therefore, at the end of the day, more money in your pocket, less interest paid. And also achieving a lower payment overall. And again... It's a common message that I'm hearing is my mortgage payments are too high. I'd love to pay less. What are the levers I can pull to achieve that? 
And so obviously one, you know, major impact on payment is going to be your interest rate. And so, yeah, there's ways to restructure things so that you achieve both of those things. These are quick numbers that can be run, you know, pretty easily. So yeah, I would say anybody out there that's at 6% hovering around that little under, little over, this is an incredible opportunity to revisit your mortgage terms um, and could be a good time before we start to see posted rates come down, because again, that is going to start right. to drive higher penalties. And so this is a really great time to just take, you know, 15 minutes out of your day and, and review those options. Because I think a, a few people might think, okay, well, even if I have a rate over six now, if rates continue to go down, why would I break it now? Wouldn't I just wait for things to go down even further before locking in again? But then the penalty sure. is probably going to be higher. So it's just, you know, looking at all your options and, and we should say too, it's like- so this is mostly for people that got an A mortgage from a bank with good credit. Like you can't take your 6% B. Can you take your 6% B or private money and move it over? Prob this is probably an A mortgage conversation, right? Well, I mean, it could be if now all of a sudden, if you're sitting in a B or a private and your situation has changed and maybe yes, uh, you would okay. qualify for a lower interest rate at another lender. Absolutely. It doesn't hurt to take a look. Um, B lenders will absolutely let you refinance. Now, again, some terms out there, they're, they're few and far between, but there are terms out there where you cannot refinance. Even some of the banks offer uh, terms like this. You have to stay with them, but to refinance, uh, you have to either stay with them. But yeah, so just check the terms that you've got, but it wouldn't hurt to take a look. I would say if you're sitting in a fixed rate right now and you're not really looking to restructure the entire thing, there is another strategy that you can use to take a part of that higher interest rate mortgage and convert it to a lower rate. We call it the, the laddering strategy. Um, and essentially what you can do here is if you have one of these products we mentioned before where it's got a built-in line of credit, let's say, for example, you have a $500,000 mortgage at 6% and you have a product where you've got, say, you know, $100,000 available on a line of credit, all tied into one nice mm -hmm. umbrella of a product. So the line of credit is uh, available to you to use and you have prepayment privileges on that mortgage at 500000 and let's say it's 20%. So that means you can make a $100,000 payment towards that $500,000 mortgage, penalty free, doesn't cost you anything. And so what you do is you take the money from the line of credit, hmm. you make that payment, all of a sudden your 500 becomes 400,000 at 6%. You've got this 100,000 on the line of credit and you just convert that to a brand new mortgage segment at say 5%. And so that allows you to, and you can make these prepayments, these large lump sum payments typically uh, on an annual basis. And so then you can start to ladder down your, your borrowing costs, right? Um, so that's a nice way to take advantage of today's lower rates if you are in a higher fixed rate. Um, so that's one way to look at it. Um, and, and that's a great thing that we've been doing for you know a number of our clients. It just allows you to sort of convert without going through the whole exercise and whatnot if you are really looking to wait for that perfect time, perhaps next year to convert the whole thing. So even though the line of credit interest rate would be higher because it's usually prime plus, right? It right. still makes sense to pay it off and then restructure it afterwards at, at the lower mortgage rate before breaking basically. Yeah, you're essentially gonna do it immediately. So although okay. the, the line of credit rate is maybe prime plus a half, mm -hmm. you're going to say today make that payment, you owe maybe one night um, you know, prime plus a half. And literally the next day you convert that hundred thousand on the line of credit to a brand new mortgage segment. So that's mm -hmm. another thing a lot of people don't realize is they have these products and they have these line of credit balances and they're paying prime, prime plus a half interest only, not really chipping away a principal. Um, you can take that balance on the line of credit and convert it to another mortgage segment. And so, you know, anybody out there that's paying prime or prime plus a half, that's an immediate, you know, mm. uh, savings right there. Now, the big difference is, of course, line of credit is an interest only payment. So from a cash flow perspective, your payments are lower. So if that's your preference, leave it as a line. Obviously, that balance is fully open. Repay principal whenever you want, whenever you want uh, in any amount. Whereas with a mortgage segment, you're going to be amortizing it. So principal and interest payments are due. So again, thorough conversation mm. to make sure that you're, you're structuring it in a way that works best for you and your family. So that's something that I guess would have always been available, but wouldn't have made sense until potentially more recently. Right, exactly, uh, for sure. And the other interesting thing right now that is pretty much an anomaly is, you know, rates are the opposite of the yeah. norm. So, you know, traditionally the five-year fixed rate, you know, is, is going to be your sort of, of, of the more common terms, the highest rate. Mm -hmm. As you get shorter in term, they typically get lower and lower. And then historically a variable closed term is 1% 
roughly maybe a little bit more lower than a five-year fixed rate term. We're sort of in the opposite of that. We're, we're trending to uh, back to normal, which is great. The other great thing that we started to see in the last you know little while is that the discount offered on variable rate terms has started to grow. You know, when we came into 2024, discounts were, were pretty minimal, but they've started to grow quite a bit, making that term, you know, even more attractive, but more importantly, shortening or, or decreasing the delta between a fixed rate and a variable rate, making variables more attractive, you know, even when considering the outlook going forward. Now, as a mortgage broker speaking <laughs> and sending files to a lot of the banks that, that cooperate with the mortgage channel, have you found that the banks are now being a little bit more aggressive on actually trying to win business and not just saying like, here's our high rate, deal with it? Is it slowly, like there's been some headlines about this. Have you seen it in your day to day? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because we had a, a period of enormous growth in, in the mortgage market in Canada. And I think a lot of lenders sort of got used to that. And then abruptly it just, you know, stopped. And so retention is a huge thing. You know, all lenders are being very careful about their uh, mortgages that they already have on their books. And so there's some pretty aggressive renewal rates that are being offered, but also lenders have targets. They want to grow their mortgage market share. And as you know, you know, purchase transactions are not what they used to be. And so one way to grow is to try and uh, attract those mortgages that are up for renewal. And so we're seeing some, you know, pretty generous promotions to switch your mortgage to these, to another lender. And again, some pretty aggressive interest rates as well. I think lenders are being a little more choosy in terms of perhaps who they're offering some of these rates to. They obviously want more than just the mortgage. And so if that's something that you are willing to do is sort of say, look, yes, I'm, I'm open to, you know, growing my relationship with a specific lender. That's where you're going to start to see some really discounted uh, interest rates. But yeah, it's, it's ultra competitive right now and things are very volatile. So it's very tough to manage. Things are changing almost on a weekly basis. And so, you know, you, you definitely want to keep in contact with your mortgage professional and whatnot and, and, and have those constant ongoing conversations going forward. So my final question is a two-parter. Um, the first part is that there is a lot of Canadians that are going to have a mortgage renewal at some point in the next uh, 12 to 18 to 24 months before we kind of you know, get right. through this moment of, of changing rates. A lot yeah. of people get a letter in the mail and say, hey, Tom, hey, Jesse, uh, this is your new rate. And they go, OK, and they move on with their life. Walk right, me right. through why they should be negotiating this rate, because a lot of or having right. you or someone in your space look yep. at it and, and look at other options, because people are taking the convenient option because I get it. Life is busy. Things happen. But you could save sure, like sure. thousands of dollars, if not more, Absolutely. by just having a conversation. Yeah, I mean, um, you get the letter in the mail, your mortgage is up for renewal, here are your options. It always you know, makes sense to talk to somebody. So obviously, first stop is going to be your current lender. Okay, I got your your notice, um, you know, what other discounts or what else can you do for me? And then also take a look at what's available elsewhere. Because as I mentioned, you know, there's a lot of lenders that have promotions right now. So for example, let's say rates are identical, all else being equal, things are the same, but you're going to get say one, two, three, four thousand $4,000 from another lender just to simply switch your mortgage over. Why wouldn't you, you know, uh, that that's quite a bit of money, right? That's money in your pocket cash that you can use for whatever you like. It's also a great opportunity at renewal time to potentially re finance. So if you've got credit card debt or mm. uh, something else that you wanted to pay off, or you've got a mortgage and a line of credit and you wanted to consolidate, right? This is a great opportunity to do that. And, and I would say definitely take a look at your options and, and talk to somebody about it. And believe me, you, you, you will have options out there. Renewing is very convenient to your point. You don't have to qualify. So there's no application right. process, no documentation required, yeah. right? So you can just simply sign a form and, and they'll roll over your balance and, and you're good to go. But yeah, if you can do a little bit of homework, you have a little bit of time on your side, you know, engage somebody to, to do that, you know, review for you and, and take a look and offer up some, some other options. In terms of, you know, what would be best going forward, you know, today fixed rates are attractive because they are a little bit lower than variable. You know, people, I think human nature is sort of here and now, right? I'm going to take the lowest rate I can today and I'm going to drop my payments a little bit possibly and uh, I'm just going to get the lowest rate that's available today. I think it is uh, definitely worth considering variable, again, just based on the outlook that's out there. 
because I think to your point, we could see spring, summer next year, variable rates get to the point where they're at or lower than fixed rates today. And don't forget that as variable starts to decrease over the next 12 months, so will or so should fixed rates. Yeah. And so one strategy or one way of looking at things overall is, you know, choose a variable rate today. Yes, perhaps you're going to pay a little bit of a premium today, but by the end of the year, you're probably going to be, you know, getting very close to what you would have locked into today. And then as fixed rates go down and maybe they start to plateau next year and we get to that 2% inflation target and the Bank of Canada starts to slow things down and says, okay, I'm happy with where things are right now. Maybe then is when you flip into uh, a fixed rate term. Right. And so in an ideal world, and just as a total example is if you were locking in today on a three year fix at a little under 5%, but you could lock in 12 months from now, a little under 4% and ride the rate wave down, you know, through a variable rate mortgage that has a reducing monthly payment as rates go down. You know, I think that's a great strategy and, and something to uh, most definitely consider if your mortgage is up for renewal right now, or if you're taking on a new mortgage, yeah. um, et cetera. So that, that would be, you know, one thing that I would highly recommend looking at. I guess there's going to be that sweet spot where it makes sense to ride the variable down before locking in. But then some if you ride it too far down before locking in, then it might not actually make sense to go back to the fixed rate. And I'd also right. say like right. t timing, it's impossible. It, if you get lucky, yeah. congrats. Um, I'd also <laughs> yeah. say like, yeah. don't le lose sleep at night and be thinking about this all day long and take away from like yeah. your actual life. That's, you know, analysis paralysis, some of it. Totally. And, any kind of final thoughts on just like, what do you, you know, someone's listening to this, maybe they're brand new to this, maybe they're experienced, like generally yep. advice to wrap this up. Sure. I mean, advice is don't try and do it all on your own. Engage somebody that is, is a mortgage professional because they know what's going on. They're seeing the rates being offered from lenders on a daily basis. They're, they're in the thick of it. They know what's going on and they can provide advice and sort of understand what your needs and wants are and sort of, you know, offer up some solutions that meet what you're looking to achieve. I think being in this industry for the last roughly 20 years now is probably the most confusing time to make a decision on term and rate just because rates are upside down. You know, the outlook is variables going down, but people tend to not be very comfortable with variable, especially with what's happened over the last couple of years. So just have that conversation with somebody. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of the best thing that you can do for yourself and your family is just understand all the options that are available to you. Don't take the first offer that's thrown at you uh, because most likely there's going to be something better out there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's, that would be my recommendation and advice. Well, I appreciate this conversation. People made it this far. I'll just give you the pitch because it's necessary <laughs> now. Like uh, you've been my personal mortgage broker for the last 10 years. You've helped like not even exaggerating hundreds of our clients and it's always gone very smooth. So I will put Jesse's Honor information. Honor and a privilege. Yeah, I will put your information in the description if somebody wants to reach out or has just specific questions because I'm sure still like we're in this and it's even like kind of complicated to us sometimes. Imagine someone that's right. not paying attention and getting their first mortgage. There's Absolutely. probably a million questions. So I'll put Jesse's Absolutely. info for you to Absolutely. reach out. Thanks so much for being here and hope everybody enjoyed Thanks, uh, checking out this episode. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Home is where your story begins.